Okay, Be'ezrat Hashem. So we're starting Pasuk uh, Chet. To put back things in perspective, in co- according to the Malbim, uh, we just finished the first journey uh, of prophetic revelation to Shlomo HaMelech. And uh, Pasuk Chet is another prophecy. He's talking about another period of uh, Shlomo's spiritual journey. The second level of prophecy, uh, the Malbim explains that it was less, less of a prophetic experience than the first one. And uh, for this specific reason, the Benot Yerushalayim that we know represent or the Goim, or it represents the influence of the, the body, the instinct, right? The Kohot Aguf, the, 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 the heaviness of the body, as the Malbim explained it, they don't, they don't really interfere with Shalomo's uh, spiritual journey. Why is that? Uh, it's simple, because when the, the more spiritual the involvement is, and the more the counterbalance of physical heaviness attacks, right? To create this uh, this uh, uh, balance and uh, and uh, an ability to have the koach uh, the free will. So the more spiritual you become, or the more you dive into kedusha, so the more the klipot, the more the the influence of tumah becomes stronger. Uh, just a small parenthesis. That's why. When we learn the Torah Tassod, when we learn Torah Ta Kabbalah, for example, it is very important to stay very pure and uh, you have to be very careful because the more you learn it and the more you awake or empower the, 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 for, the, the negative forces, the negative forces. Uh, for, for such reason, uh, one of the threats of learning Torah Ta Kabbalah if you you are not you don't have the proper vessel, is that a person can uh, lose his mind and uh, fall in his emuna, etc., etc. So, and, and all this not because because it, uh, there is a punishment, but simply because as you grow, as you, the, the greater you are in your Torah, your kedusha, so the more the the challenge has to be, right? If not, it's no longer a free will and a choice and proactive choice that comes from you who made this balance in order for a person to always be choosing one over the other um, so says the malvim since the second nevua was not uh, at the same the same second nevua of shlomo melech was not such a holy or spiritual journey like the first one, we will not see in that in that uh, portion of Shira Shirim that speaks about that journey of Shlomo HaMelech, that second spiritual journey, Benot uh, Yerushalayim, the, the, the involvement of Benot Yerushalayim that represent the, the physicality, the negativity, the heaviness of the body, etc. So the, the, the second journey starts from Pasukhet all the way until the end of the second Perek. So now we, we according to the Malbim, we're entering a completely different subject, right? It's a new journey right now. We finished the first one, we're entering the second one. The Gaon Midina, Continues, continues his uh, teachings, and uh, according to the Gaon Mivina, it's a continuation from the beginning of the Perek. Uh, that, if you recall, are talking about Yetziat Mitzrayim, talking about the Inuim, the different ways we suffered in Egypt, and continues on that direction to reveal to us all the Yesodot all the teachings that we need to learn, that Shlomo HaMelech learned 
from the, the exile of, uh, of, uh, of Egypt and the journey in the Midbar, in the desert. And as we start, it, it's, it, it's almost, it's relevant, but not so relevant right now. But as we start the new journey of Shalom HaMelech, in his new prophecy, in his new revelation from Hashem, or according to the uh, to the Gaon, there, there, there is there is something very interesting, and we're going to start with the Gaon, and then we'll dive into the Malbim, because the Malbim brings a different flavor to the Yesod, to the teachings of the of the Gaon, and the, I feel the Gaon is like the structure, right? And the Malbim comes and uh, embellishes the structure. So the Pasuk says, call Pasuk Chet, call Dodi Dofek. The, the sound of my beloved, right? The voice, the call of my beloved. Call Dodi, sorry. Hinezeba, it's coming. It's here. It comes. Medaleg al Harim. He's leaping over the the mountains, mekapets and kofets. He's jumping over la gevaot, over the hills, over the hills. I would like to introduce the pasuk tet because it's very connected to pasuk chet. And be'ezrat Hashem, be, you know what we can do, we can do, and uh, what we have to complete next year, we will. Dome Dodi and my beloved, right? Dome is compared to a tzvi. We know the tzvi, right? It's the, the deer, right? We said it's the deer. Or he is compared to a young ram. That, say, that sits behind the, the walls of the house, behind the kotel, right? And he's hiding. And what is he doing? He's watching over inside the house from the window. Or he's putting his eye and through the little cracks of the house, he sees what's happening inside. Okay, so now we have to, <laughs> to break down the information that needs to be analyzed. First of all, the definition of call. Okay, call Dodi, the voice of Akadosh Baruch what does that mean? The voice, the voice of my beloved. Hine, here, Hine, Zeba, here it's coming. What does that mean? Hine, Zeba, it's coming. The, the voice of my beloved, Ba is coming. Hine, suddenly, Zeba, it's coming. Uh, a lot of words. Hine, Zeba. So that's, that's one portion that needs to be very well understood. Because based on the call Dodi that, that we have to identify, so we will understand what medaleg alearim, leaping over the mountain means, right? Or jumping over the hills. What's the difference between a mountain, between a hill? What's the difference between leaping or jumping? And then a comparison. Then the, the voice, right? The call, the sound of this dodi. Dome, let's see. Or it's compared to its V, to the deer, or it's compared to the ram. And you know what it's doing? Or it's watching, it's hiding behind the kotel, behind the wall, or it's watching through the window, or through the crack of the of, of the you know of the walls. Good. Was that we know we we we've addressed the difference there is between uh, the tzvi 
in the and the ayal, right? Remember, uh, there's a difference between the ayal, the the ram, and the deer, the way they run. One jumps. That's right. Versus just ru running, right? Yeah, exactly. A lot, a lot, a lot of information. A lot of information. But we will see how 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 much it enriches our understanding of Akadosh Baruch Hu in our life. Okay. So we start with. Uh, keep in mind. Keep in mind. That right now we are inside a lower spiritually exposed journey of Shlomo Amelech. Okay. Why? Why is that? Now we're in a prophecy that is not so uh, so holy. Akadosh Baruch does not reveal himself so much spiritually. So it's oh, you're so saying the, the the medium in which he's connecting with him is not the highest level. Correct. 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 And as we said, because of that, we don't have so much pushback from the Benot Yerushalayim. Says the Gaon Mibina, and we will see it's very, very aligned with the Malbim. Kol hine ba. Okay? Kol, sorry, kol, Dodi. Hine ze ba represent four periods of creation. Kol represents Tehiyat Amitim. The Kol represents Tehiyat Amitim. Why? Because it Why? says, by he Kol Kehinavi Veine Raash. The Pasuk in Yeheskel says, here, I hear the voice of, you know, the sound of my prophecy. Like I, pro sorry, I hear the sound like I, like my pro in my prophecy. So says the Gaon Mivina, when Shlomo Amener used the word call, he's referring to the prophecy of Yechezkel, which is the prophecy of Tehiyat Amitim. If you want to learn about that prophecy, it's Perek Lamed Zayin. Lamed Vav, Lamed Zayin. Kol. Kol Dodi. The Tehiyat Ametim that will come out of Dodi, out of Akadosh, from Akadosh Baruch Hu. It's the, the last step. It's the last step in creation. It's Tehiyat Ametim. Hine. Hine is Yemot Mashiach. Like he says, like we say, Mutzae Shabbat, when we do the Kiddush of Abdallah, we say Rishon Letzion, Hine, Hinam. Hine, we, and what are we referring to? We're referring to Mashiach. We pray for Yawan Nabi to come and bring Mashiach. Hine, here, the word Hine. Is something sudden. Hine here. Ze. It's olam ze. This represent this world. The physical world is something you can point at, identify, and say this. When you say this, okay, you're referring to something specific that can be identified and different and and by by pointing it out you differentiate it from the rest of the things when you say this it means this and not something else and this is something specific this is the world of olamaze the physical world Ba, ba, coming, is what? Is Olam Abba, right? The Olam Haba, Olam Haze, Neze, Omer. Ba, is the Olam Abba, right? So we have Tehiyat Amitim, 
we have the time of Mashiach that lead us to Tehiyat Amiti, right? So we have the end result, the, right. the, 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 the last level, the level under it, which is Mashiach. And in between, you have Olam Azeh and Olam Abba. Doesn't it feel out of order? What, which one? Olam Azeh, right? Olam Azeh. Should come after Olam Abba. After Abba, yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. What, what is the what is the purpose? Olam Abba or Olam Azeh? Olam Abba. Huh? Olam Abba. But how do you get Olam Abba without Olam Azeh? No, but shouldn't shouldn't it be Olam Azeh? Tchiyat Hametim Yamim Hamashiach Olam Abba. No, Olam Abba is not the Olam Abba. Olam Abba is the world of Neshamot that are be are benefiting today, right? Of the light of Akadosh Baruch Hu until Mashiach comes and Tchiyat Hametim happens. So then, shouldn't Yamim Hamashiach be the end? No, Mashiach is the transition to Tchiyat Hametim. Mashiach comes and then Tchiyat Hametim, and that's it, right? Right, but it feels out of order, regardless. Okay, it feels a little bit out of order. You're right. It feels out of order, but it's not okay. because because tehiyat metim is the end, the end of time when the, the metim will revive. This is a period that will last until Akadosh Baruch Hu decides to stop. But in order to get to that, you need Yemot Mashiach, the times of Mashiach. Where everybody will accept that Akadosh Baruch Hu is emet, right? Unanimously, and that power of emet will bring life to the metim. Okay? okay, but in order to do that, you have to live in this world. Okay, right? You have to bring it, right? But to it, there is uh, what happens in between when you're no longer here. You have the olam haba. Right, in between. So shouldn't it be olam hazeh then olam haba? Again, yes, that's that's simply that's what it that's how it should be. You're right, you're right. But what Shlomo Amelech is telling us here, and what we're seeing is that right? One hour in this world is better than in all than all the olamaba. Why? Because you can grow, you can learn Torah, you can be proactive, etc. etc. So, in terms of the process, in terms of the process. Olam Azeh is the one that prevails over Olam Abba. Olam Abba, Omdim, Omdim, Benenim is You stand. There's no more Alicha. There's no more progression. There's no more growth. There's no more growth. It's definitely a good question. It's definitely a good question. The, the, the simple answer to it is, and uh, I. So the Tarum says something else. Uh, if, I, if we go into it, we might uh, be a little bit. He's going more towards a historic uh, event. I don't want to take you off track. We could sidebar but, but, for later. But the, uh, the the simple answer is is that Olam Azeh has more value and prevails to Olam to the Olam Abba. The Olam Abba is where you belong until Mashiach comes and Tchiyat Amitim happens, right? So Vadai, Vadai, Vadai. That in terms of reflection for the Neshama. You want to be with Akadosh Baruch Hu, and you want to be able to enjoy, you know, the light of Akadosh Baruch Hu. But in terms of proactivity and in terms of of uh, the, uh, involvement and 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 uh, and influence on creation, it doesn't come from Olam Abba. You stop influencing in Olam Abba. It's just either Hana'a or punishment based on your whatever oh, no, you do. No, no, no. Punishment is not You finish Gainam and you're out, right? It's finished. So it's Gainam is not. Right. Uh, so it's it's really just Hana'a from whatever your merits are in Olam Azeh. Correct. 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 So. So here Shlomo Amelech, according to the Gaon Mivina, addresses four steps in creation and he says how does Akadosh Baruch Hu brings us through those steps Dome, oh sorry medaleg alearim mekapetz halagevaot so he says there is a difference 
between dilug, between when you when you leap over and when you jump over. When you leap over, it you do it with one foot. Right? You have one foot, you spread your foot as much as you can, and you leap over whatever you want. Say you have a like a, 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 a you know like a water uh, how you call it you have some water on the street yeah and you want to go you want to step over it so you can leap over it is you put one you have one foot on the floor and you put the other foot on the other side of the water whatever you want to leap over and that's it and you walk out right so it's just it's a way of it's almost the same the same action of the walk but with a bigger spread between the legs. We're jumping, we're jumping, you, you, to, when you jump, you have your two feet above the ground. Okay? Yeah? It says, medaleg or oh, you leap over the mountain, or you jump over the hills. It says the ground, Medina, what are the harim and what are the gevaot? Says the harim, the mountains are the avot. The avot akedushim. Abraham, Tzak, Yaakov. The gevaot are the imaot. Are the imaot. He says, when, when you have the zechut of the avot, the transition happens gradually like you can you can instead of walking you're going to make you're going to make us you're going to spread your 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 uh, your step and make it wider you're going to leap over from the zechut of the harim from the zechut of the avot you can make time go faster you're able to impact the influence on time and see results fa you know more efficiently that's the leap however if you're able to uh, have the zechut of your mothers of the imaot sarah rivka rahel leah then the jump is no longer like a leap you're actually really jumping. There's, there is, there is a kitsura derech. There, the time shortens for you. So if that's the case. Why do I always feel like we're triggering the the beracha of the avot and not of the imahot? Like in our tefillah, what are we saying? Abraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov. How do we trigger the beracha of the imahot? Very good, very good. We're gonna to get to that in a second. Okay. Shema beni. Musar avicha ve'al titosh torat imecha. Listen, my son, to the Musar of your father, but never let go of the Torah of your mother. Okay. Wait, can you repeat that? I want to write that down. Shema abeni, listen, my son, Torat uh, uh, Musar avicha. Listen Where? to the Musar of your father. Actually, yeah, it's not it's not charge. Okay? Shema Beni Musar Abicha. Be al titosh and don't let go. Torat imecha. <clears throat> we see that there is two types of connection. We have two types of connection. If you open the uh, Mishle. Okay, the first plank of Mishle. Shma beni Torah Musar Avicha. So the Avot, the Avot. I'm sorry? I said it's a beautiful sentence for a Torah dedication for. Ah, yes, 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 definitely. Yes, it's used, it's used. Okay. So there is a difference between the, the Musar Avicha, 
and the Torah Timecha. The Musar comes with hard work. Musar, when you teach Musar, right? You need to break and overcome the, uh, the old habits. That's what Musar is about. The Torah Imecha, the Torah of your mother, is the actions, the behavior that your mother teaches you from love. So says Shelurah Melech, Medaleg Alearim. There's two ways to get to Tehiyat Amiti. Two ways to go through all these Olam Azen, Olam Abba. One way is with the Zechut of the Avot, is through the, Hard the hardship, the hard work, the grinding. Of the Musar, your Avot, the Harim teach you. And that's why it's Harim. Harim mountains, they're made out of rock. There is usually no life on the mountains. Right? It's very rocky. And it's very high. When you look at your Yetzer Hara, when you fight your Yetzer Hara, it looks like a mountain. You have to fight it. You have to overcome it. And, but by doing this, you rise up, you rise up, you rise up like a mountain. So with the Zechut of the Avot, with the Musar of the Avot, what we learn from the Avot HaKedoshim, it helps us, Medaleg, Medaleg, you, you leap over, yeah. you go faster. Instead of grinding and, and sweating every little effort, with the Musar of the Avot, with the Torah Avot, you will rise and overcome the Yetzer Ara, the mountain of the Yetzer Ara faster. But if you have the Torah Timecha, but if you have the values of the Imaot, the Imaot HaKedoshot, the love of the mother, the Torah of the mother, the, the values the mother install in a person, this emotional dedication, when it comes from passion, when it comes from love versus the grinding and the tension and the, and the regulation of the father, then it's a much higher level, right? It's, it's, at that point, the outcome is And that's our relationship with Hashem. Exactly. You jump, completely jump. Now, the, the bracha is no longer that you go faster. You actually jump steps. You see Nisim Veniflaot. You have someone, he grinds at work, right? He does, he tries, he tries, he tries, and every step is like uh, taking out the Neshama. And sometimes he doesn't even get there, right? <clears throat> That's without the Zechut of the Avot. Then you have the one that actually does it. And you know what? It's happening. He's grinding. Effort step by step, but it's, he sees it's happening. It's happening step by step, step by step. <laughs> but he has to go through the steps. He cannot just jump, impossible. That's the zechut of the avot. And then suddenly you have a guy. You know, shamayim, it falls like you don't understand. Like uh, no steps <laughs> from from zero to uh, to to a hundred. Boom, like this. What happened? Zechut imahot. Zechut imahot. This is the one that has in him the merit of his mothers, the merit of the Imaot HaKedoshot. So, ha Rav, how do, you, how do you merit the Zechut of the Imaot? Is it through Chavod uh, for the Imaot, for your actual mother? It's, it's, no, it's, it's, no, 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 no. It's but an analogy. But die, okay. that your, the, the mother is a figure representing the nourishing and the love and the care in a child, right? Okay. But it's, it's uh, just a point of reference to the level of relationship 
the Torah has with you and you with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. When you find comfort in the Torah, okay, when you find love in the Torah, when you feel, when you pray, you feel like Kadosh Baruch Hu is hugging you. The Torah is hugging you, he's caring for you. That's the, just no. like your mother, right? This, is, this relationship brings, brings the kfitza, brings the jump. Yeah, originally my brain was going there too about respecting your mother and father. It's just an analogy. I think that, you know, when you serve Hashem with love instead of just rigorous work, then you Correct. bring forward that jumping forward. Correct. It's us with Hashem. It's our relationship with Hashem. Make sense? Mm -hmm. It's the zechut of the ima. That you, uh, listen, what is the difference between a father and a mother? The father gives, the mother receives, right? The mother, the female, is a receiver. The male is the giver. Correct? Right? Now, when in 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 in, in the chinuch, in the chinuch, the father is more rigorous and the mother is more loving. Right? The emotions come from the mother, but the structure comes from the, the father. The Musar is the father. The Torah, the love, the, 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 comes from the mother. And says Shalom Melech. He says, this is the ayin and the ram, right? Medaleg ale arim. The medaleg is what? Is leaps, right? It's like we, we, we said, We said that the tzvi, he runs. The ayal jumps, right? The, the ram jumps and the deer runs. <coughs> and that's what it means. Dome dodi li tzvi. My dodi, my beloved, is like a tzvi. It's like the ram. Not the, sorry, the deer, the deer. Okay. The ayal is, is the ram. Dome do di litzvi, it is like the deer. Oh, le ofera ayalim, or like, oh, so now, now, is or, you can, you, it, the, the, the kol dodi, right? The, the dodi that I'm looking for, my beloved one, Akadosh Baruch Hu, that I want to reveal. That relationship, or is compared to the tzvi, or it's compared to the effort of the running, or it's compared to the jumping of the ayal. Ah, what is the, what does it, how does that impact us? In is omeda harkot lenu, it says, Hineze. What is Hineze? Is Mashiach and Olamaze, right? And so we're either going to jump forward or we're going to take steps forward? Exactly. Hineze, Omed Ahakot Lenu, Omed Mashiach and Olamaze, which are both based, depending on our first, right? Olamaba, it's Olamaba. It's a reflection of your Olamaze. Right? But your Mashiach depends on your action and your Olamaze also depends on your action. So, Rav, I have a question though. You know, last year or we talked about how in, in Mitzrayim, you know, the, the Exodus was brought sooner, right? Yes. And, and but that, that was out of Hashem's love for the people, but the people didn't seem like they were serving Hashem out of love at the time. Oh. So what are you saying? It's it's leaping. It's not jumping, right? Yeah. Okay. Very good. So the four hundred years went from what? From four hundred years in Egypt to, to two hundred something. Right. 
There was no jumping. It was just straight faster. You understand? Yeah, but they don't, it doesn't feel like they triggered it. What do you mean? But that, what, what do you mean? No, Lama, why, why are you saying this? That, that it says that they had, they had, they didn't change their name. They didn't make, they didn't uh, mingle. But that, that they have, uh, it's Akwa Hashem. Uh, it's Akwa Hashem, right. for sure. But it means Avodah Kasha, they were grinding. So why did HaKadosh Baruch Hu said, oh, 400 years, no problem. But instead of it starting from Yaakov going down to Egypt, you know what? We're going to shift the 400 years to the, the, the to Yitzhak Avinu. And from that time, we're going to count to 400 years. So they only stayed in Egypt 210 years. This is better. Right. This is quicker, right? It's quicker. It's not yes. jumping. So, let's go back. The Hine, the, the Mashiach, the sword of Mashiach, and the Ze, and the, the Yorolam Ze, both are Omed, Omed, stands on the other side of the Kotel, on the other side of the wall. Says the God Mibina, what is, what is the wall? The wall is the actions of men. The wall is the Averot. Your beracha in Olam is on the other side of your action of your Averot, your Avonot. Mashiach is standing where? On the other side of your, of your Averot also. Meaning through. Meaning a man creates with his actions a wall around him. A thick wall. And it's a barrier to go forward. I'm sorry? And it's a barrier to go forward. It's, a, it's, it's definitely a barrier. It's a barrier of his own beracha. The ze, the olam ze, okay, I want to enjoy this olam. I want olam ze. I want to be able to see the beracha. I want to be able to see the fast forward. How do I see fast forward? Yeah, yeah it's, a good, it's also a good analogy. If you, you have a, like a movie or I don't know, a series, you can do fast forward, so you're just going faster. Or you can brace the, like the double uh, arrow and you jump to the next uh, episode. I don't know what, right? Yeah. There's a they look and there's a fast forward. Yeah. Okay. This is uh, the same thing. So he says, why why don't I be, don't benefit from the hine from Mashiach? Why don't I benefit from the ze? Because it's already a It's hiding behind my actions, behind my avirut. However. Through, he says, through Teshuvah, through Teshuvah, says the Gaon Mivin, and there's two types of Teshuvah. There is a Teshuvah from the heart, and there is the Teshuvah from, with actions. Sometimes a person, he has an awakening, he wants to do Teshuvah. I wish, ah, I didn't do this. I wish I didn't do that. But you know what? It doesn't follow through the actions. It's an emotional regret with no practical decisions and change. So he says, this is Metzitz Mina Harakim. Metzitz is looking through the cracks of the heart. When, when the, 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 the Tzvi or the Ayal, right? When, when the, the, the Hineze, the Beracha from this world, or the Beracha of Mashiach, they're looking through your actions. Hashem is looking. But you know what? You don't see him. You don't see the, the eye of the animal through the crack, but he sees you, right? He says, HaKadosh Baruch sees your heart. You don't think he sees you. You don't feel the connection, but he's seeing. He's seeing what's happening behind those walls, behind the, this, you know, when right. in your heart, something nobody sees, he, he's able to see. Mitzitz, that's, he's just having a I, quick look. It's the mitzvot. intentions behind the mitzvot. I'm sorry? It's the intentions behind the mitzvot that Hashem sees right into our heart. That's, that, that's we're not even there. Now we're talking about a person that feels bad. Of, he's doing teshuvah in his heart. Nobody sees it. It's 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 a, a moment of connection with Hashem that everybody feels and say, ah, I wish I didn't do this. I wish I was better. I wish I could do this better. But you know, there's no follow through. Okay. 
Mitzvitz mina harati. However, however, the real breakthrough is what? Is what we start with. Not with the mitzvitz mina. Mashgiach mina halonot. Mashgiach mina halonot says, says the gaon is when the, the, when the ram or the deer goes to the window and looks at you. And you're inside. And you see, you see that he's looking at you. You see that he's, he's with you. There is, an, there is a connection. So he says, he says, these are the two levels of teshuva. He says, mashgiach mina halonot is when you do teshuva and you do actions. You know what? Hashem is looking at me in the eyes. There is this, this obviously there is this window. And Malaso, <laughs> the window is the window. There's this, this separation between us. But I can see him looking at me. I see Akadosh Baruch He's with me. He's in front of me. Yeah? You know, when Hashem is mashgiach, takes care of you and looks at you and looks after you and reveals himself from behind the kotel, from behind the wall, that thick wall from behind your averot, when you start to make practical changes, actions, then Hashem reveals himself. And then you see the presence of HaKadosh Baruch You feel the presence of HaKadosh Baruch But if it's only in your heart, and you cannot expose yourself. You don't want to expose yourself. Ah, you will see what happens in the heart. He sees, but you don't see him. You expose yourself. He exposes himself to you. You do it uh, behind the scenes. No problem. I will look after you also behind the scenes. Hmm. Amazing. Where do we see such a big difference? I may have to say. When I was in Brazil on my way back, I, I maybe I, I shouldn't say, uh, okay. I was with someone and he told me, and he told me how he's, uh, he's uh, on the way back. And he told me, I'm from New York. And he told me that he stopped eating out. He was very, very proud of it. Yeah. He said, you know, Finnish, I don't eat out anymore. Uh, I don't go to restaurants, but it's very painful. It is very, because now every time our friends, they, they, uh, we're going to this restaurant. Yeah. We cannot go. We cannot go. This is being exposed, socially exposed. This is terrible. Think about it, right? So, so suddenly your social life is like almost collapsing because a lot of people decide that you know where where can we be social? When we go to I don't know what. When or when you stop, you're at work or whatever. You need to stop and you say, hey, you know what? I've been ham. I have to go for mincha. The time came. I have to stop. I have to go to shul. I have to go for mincha. Whatever. This is a proactive action. Right? You're exposed. You wear the kippah. You're exposed. You wear tzitzit. You're exposed. You go to shul in the morning. You're exposed. So when you expose yourself, I say, okay, no problem. Hashem exposes himself. Tremendous lesson. Because every one of us is surrounded by a fortress of Averot. A fortress of Averot. And the outcome is what? Is that the hine? Our own involvement, our own uh, dedication to Mashiach is detached from us. The Beracha from the Ze from Olam Aze is detached from us. So we sweat, we struggle, we, we, we are frustrated. Why? It's because of the, of the walls we built with our actions. So Shlomo Amir comes and gives and reveals to us how we get Hashem to bypass the wall and actually look at us and reveal himself to us. Or by a teshuva in the heart or by the teshuva with the actions. So, Thank you. 
This is the Gaon Medina, in a nutshell. In a nutshell. Um, yeah, because he goes, he goes, the gun goes into a, a little deeper uh, explanation. So we see, we see from this, now if we put the two psukim back together, a man has a journey. Think about it. We start with, with Olam Aze, and then we go to Olam Abba to eventually witness Mashiach. For those that are in Olam Aze, they will witness Mashiach, right? And if, eventually to Tehiyat Amiti. We need, we need a vessel. We need a boat. We need guidance. We need a structure. So you have the one that has no structure. This one, Bichlal, is not even addressed yet. Because <laughs> this is, okay. Then depending on your relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, depending on how you approach HaKadosh Baruch Hu, out of fear, out of love, Musa, Torah, Imecha, Abba, Ima, you will have an influence, a divine intervention in time. Time is suddenly in your control. Think about it. It's pretty crazy. And and Be'emet, it's like this, you know, I, you know, I have to tell you something. When I was in Eretz Israel and I, and I was going back and forth uh, for the Kolel, I used to travel all over the world to do Kiruv, right? To go and sit with people day and night. Right? And I come back for, for uh, in, in, in Israel. I used to come back and what it takes Avrechim three, four days to learn, I would, I would, I would learn it in an hour. The Emunah Shlema in an hour. Now, Chazbi I'm not, they're much bigger than Mitech than me. I'm, I'm like, a, I'm, I'm like 0. 0.0001 of who they are. But it has nothing to do with that. That when, when you devote yourself to HaKadosh Baruch, HaKadosh Baruch will give it back to you. You go to help people that are completely lost. Oh, I lost my time. I lost my day. You know, today I could have been productive. I could have sat in the, in the kolel. I could have learned that. But instead, I'm, I'm schlepping on a plane. I have to go there. Uh, you, you sit with people that, that you don't want to say, speak to. You don't want to talk to. I wasted my time. Uh, but you know what? You come back. Suddenly you come back at work. And what it took everybody... <laughs> well, it takes everyone uh, weeks. One phone call. Okay. That's what it is. The time is in our hands. We choose how time influences us. Very simple. In which dynamic we are. Ah, very good. Very good. That's number one. And then depending on that, depending on that, on that dynamic, we have the other impact, the other influence of how, how much we invite Akadosh Baruch Hu to look after us in our lives. This is the craziest, the craziest, the most ridiculous, and you know, Chesed Akadosh Baruch Hu does to us. Invite me in your life so that I can help you. <laughs> Will I look at you and care for you? And make sure your your time is no time, or that's not what you want. Invite me in. Invite me in. That's all it is. Invite me in. I'm here. I'm at the door. Just invite me in. Help me help you. So so to simplify is do my mitzvot, invite me in, and I'll watch over you. Absolutely. Black on white. Black on white. The and secret then the, of and then, in first grade. And then the way that you do the mitzvot and build a relationship will determine what happens inside the house. Correct. Correct. How quickly, how fast, how Meaning, small. if you just do the mitzvot like a robot, there's a certain right. level of benefit. You do it with love, do it with love and, and then it's... That's right. That's right. That's right. This is amazing class today. Beautiful. Oh, we didn't touch the Malbim yet. Our next next uh, show, we're going to learn the Malbim 
on those pesukim. How can we say that Shlomo, this wasn't a prophecy that was... <laughs> Very good. That's Chazak. That's the most amazing thing, is that all this came from Ruach HaKodesh, not from Nebuah. It's not that Kadosh Baruch Hu came and revealed that to him, but instead it's Shlomo Amelech's work to get to reveal a Kadosh Baruch Hu that led him to that. It's, it's so beautiful. It's, it's, because it's knowledge through direct was, experience. If, if it was a Kadosh Baruch Hu coming and say, you know what, this is it. <laughs> Thank you, Hashem. Thank you. You come to me and you, you tell me what, uh, you know, what to do. Obviously, you, you know, you know better, right? Yeah, to get to the it's easy for me. Yeah. But this is Shlomo Amelech's revelation. This is the power. This is the beauty. It's almost better than a, than a nebuah. In a, for the from purpose, of the, impact, purpose of the message, yes. From, from a spiritual impact, no. But from a message impact, from learning from a man, absolutely. Absolutely. This is, this is incredible when you think. It's such a beautiful present. And it's so practical. And it's so yasha. And it's so simple. It's so simple. It's hard work. Nobody says. But hey, you know what? You're fighting your own demons. We're, we have to now bypass the wall that you created. It's, it's so beautiful. It's such a beautiful message to carry with you through your day. Absolutely. And we're going we're gonna to have even more flavor with the Malbin. Thank you. Should we do it tomorrow? <laughs> Thank you so much. Have a beautiful day. You too. Love you. Bye, Tati. Bye.